All right. So, hi, I'm Philip, and today we're going to be talking about maximum a posteriori estimation and why it's good. How is this relevant? Well, we've been looking at a various ODE filters previously, and it, in fact, it turns out that they can kind of be seen as approximations of the maximum a posteriori estimate. And this is a good estimate, as I will indicate in this talk. And so as per usual, we have an initial value problem uh, and an unknown function y dagger, uh, which derivative is equal to f of y dagger, and then you have some initial value y naught. And the way we solve this problem in a Bayesian way is that we define a Gaussian process prior y, which is assumed to have new derivatives, and then we need some data. And the data is defined by specifying a grid on some interval 0 to t, on which we want to solve the ODE. And then we just simply say that our data is that our GP interpolates uh, the ODE relation on this particular grid. And uh, this defines a measure on interpolants of the ODE relation. Uh, this is a very hard object to deal with. And so the next best thing would be to look at the maximum a posteriori estimate, which is defined as the minimum norm interpolant in the reproducing kernel Hilbert space of the Gaussian process prior. And so for this object, uh, we have a result according to this. So if the function f and the initial value y naught uh, form a sufficiently regular problem, and the Gaussian process prior has an RKHS, which is in some sense equivalent to a Sobolev space, then the map estimate actually converges at a polynomial rate in the maximum step size. And so it is indeed a good thing to try to target the maximum posterior estimate. And thanks for watching.